Protoss player gets in a few more hits on that medevac, and David Kim, Kim's harassment here has come to a, a quick end. Now, David Kim didn't really kill very many probes there, but he didn't need to. We saw him take down a pilot, we saw him take down an assimilator as well. But the real benefit for David Kim at that point was that he forced Yun Ho to pull away his probes, meaning that he wasn't mining from one of his bases. Yeah, all of those workers not operating for that long a period of time is a real cost. That could be hundreds and hundreds of minerals lost by Yun Ho in that one exchange. And yes, David Kim also lost minerals and resources by losing those units. But, you know, it's difficult to say at this point where the advantage will lie, but it was still a really effective raid for David Kim, and of course it may force Yun Ho to make different types of choices with his technology later, just to avoid a similar type raid. Yun Ho's trying to establish map control. You see that David Kim is defended relatively well right now. He has a few Hellions. He does have some siege tanks, and he is probably unaware of Yun Ho's 9 o'clock expansion. Yun Ho took a second expansion, so right now he's going to have the resource advantage, but he's also going to be able to skate out the front of David Kim's base so that he won't walk into a sure trap. Yeah, this is what he needs to see. He's got the observer in position, the siege tank shooting away, the blink up on the high ground. I'll have to pick off a single siege tank, but of course there's a cooldown on blink. He needs to get away. The floors are closing in for the kill. He needs to buy himself, and there's the blink. He got the blink off in time, and he got away with the rest of his forces. Still a little bit of a beating he took there for not a lot of gain. And here we see is another response from Yun Ho moving out of the board. This is a warp prism. This is a unit that you can use to transport units, but you can also use it to create a power field. And this is incredibly important for the Protoss because he can use this power field to warp in forces anywhere he wishes. Now, David Kim, Mr. Seriously, he's managed to main control that one watchtower, so he may have seen that warp prism fly by. He probably was able to see that. We do see that David Kim is uh, retaliating a little bit, trying to bunker up his base. We can see he doesn't want any stalkers getting there, harassing him anymore. And down in the lower right corner of the map, we see that that warp prism has made it all the way into David Kim's island expansion. And there he goes, using that warp prism, putting it in the phase mode, and bringing in some zealots. This is not good for David Kim. We see that harvester count just fall. Yeah, you can see David Kim's desperately trying to counterattack. The workers can fight back, but they're going to take a lot of damage in this coming exchange. He may even manage to wear down those zealots over time and take them out, but still, every worker dead is just vital economy lost, and you can see the damage has been done there. The workers do not manage to survive that attack, and the command center is forced to flee the battlefield. With one unit and a handful of zealots, Yun Ho has destroyed an entire expansion and really put himself on top of the game, and David Kim's response is quick and brutal. Here come the Reapers jumping up to high ground before it being chased off by the stalkers. Yeah, Yun Ho's doing a great job of overall map control. We saw him put the pressure onto that island expansion, as well as defend his base from what could have been a very devastating raid. And we see Reapers moving through the watchtower area and pushing over into Yun Ho's 9 o'clock expansion. And here they go, looking like they could go for some cliff harass here. Oh, and we see, wow, stim on Reapers. That's going to deal absolutely massive damage. Just jumping up onto the cliff as soon as the stalkers warp into play, and they're able to take down a stalker in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, and with no observers in the area, nothing you can use to to see on the high ground. You can't blink to the high ground. You can't blink where you can't see. And so the Reapers are just dominating right now. They can get anything they can get at, they can destroy. They only manage to take out the one assimilator. And here comes an observer. This is exactly what the Protoss player needs to counter this new Terran threat. He's got to get the observer over here. This gives him vision up to the high ground. Oh. He can blink. David Kim uh, doesn't like the look of it. He does manage oh. to try to blink down, to do, to jump down to do some damage, but it's not enough. And the stalkers overwhelm the Reaper attack. Yeah, David Kim thought that he could blink, or excuse me, jump off of the cliff, harass a little bit, and then jump back right. up. But little did he know that Yun Ho was already in position with an observer. Yeah, and just the jump down and the jump up cost him some very, very important time, but it looks Ooh. like David Kim has got a huge force now moving out of the map. David Kim has built a planetary fortress at his high yield here, which is a vital, vital benefit. Looks like the Zealots are going to stay and play there, guarding that location. David Kim, over on the left-hand side of the map, pushing up against the Protoss. Major battle about to occur right here in the middle of the field. Oh, we see the stocks trying to blink away. Yun Ho is right now fighting a two-front battle. David Kim has a really good position at this point in the game, and he's going to be setting up camp out in the middle. The siege tanks were in siege mode. He's going to be falling back to the Zell Naga Watchtower, putting them in siege mode. Once again, he really wants Yun Ho to try making a push on him. Yeah, he really wants to take control of this position. He really hopes Yun Ho will be foolish enough to come out here and engage with all those Marauders and Hellions. Look, he's got the Hellions up front because he gets the Zelts. Oh, oh there's a Stye Storm. Huge, huge hit. Lots of damage. The Marauders can kind of tank that, but that's way too many no. hits. They need more than that if they're going to take that kind of damage. You can't take multiple Stye Storm hits. And here come the Protoss pushing in, looking for a little payback. Another Psystorm right in the middle of the Terran stack. 
not looking too good for David Kim. Some great placement on those side storms from Yunho. He really used his tech advantage to to overwhelm David Kim's army. He has the perfect counter to any sort of low tier army. That side storm really, really turned the tide of battle, and he had enough high Templar that he was able to just storm after storm after storm. And there's the Protoss charge. This is looking really, really great for the Protoss right now. They've got a huge advantage. They've got a massive amount of board control. They've got a much larger army, and they're moving onto the board. The Terrans, of course, got to have some kind of response here, and it looks like the Protoss are moving down to engage this planetary fortress. You can see they're trying to tear it out. The Terrans, meanwhile, are repairing it rapidly, even as they're side storming the SCVs. Meanwhile, the Terran force moves up right behind this force. More side storms as the Terran and Protoss battle it out over this planetary fortress. Oh, but it's not looking good for Yunho. He's been sandwiched in with between a planetary fortress and a large army, and he's almost about to take down the planetary fortress, but no. Oh, the planetary fortress with sub-100 HP just barely lives. Unbelievable. Huge amounts of damage to David Kim's army. He loses a ton of SCVs there, but still, I think the advantage went to him. He wiped out that entire Protoss force. Well, a little sneaky shenanigans by the Protoss here. They've got some high temple on the high ground using that warp prism. Maybe he'll do some damage up there. Meanwhile, it looks looks like a nuclear weapon from David Kim has been launched. He's got a medevac overhead trying to heal it. The oh. ghost is healed while the medevac picks him up and the nuke lands, hitting the Nexus, failing to destroy it, but still doing a lot of damage as David Kim's forces roll in to trash this Protoss base. Well, the ghost just barely gets away. Good thing the medevac was there to heal him up for just enough right now. David Kim doesn't have sight, but oh, he throws down a scan able to take down those stalkers. And now it's looking like, wow, that Nexus is free reign. You can see the Thors using their special ability to deal absolutely massive damage to Yun Ho's base. And he's using some size storm on the Thors. It's a little bit of a oh. mistake. He really should be going for a phase shift at that point. It's a new ability. He's probably not 100% aware of it yet, but it allows you to actually put Thor out of the action for a short period of time. And the Colossus moving in now. Again, also not a great one against the Thors, but they do do a significant amount of damage. It does give him some advantage here. And the Protoss just powering through these Thors with all the wrong weapons. But he's got such a powerful economy at this point, he can afford to do it. And another new dropping from David Kim, doing terrible, terrible damage to that Nexus as the Ghost is just continuing his constant harassment of the Protoss. David Kim's doing exactly what he needs to be doing at this point in the game. He needs to put pressure everywhere simultaneously. We can see that Yun Ho did have map control. Another nuke comes down, able to take down Yun Ho's natural. He currently only has one base on the left side of the map to gather minerals from. His main has been mined out. Unbelievable. The Ghost for the win as it closes in, dropping nuke after nuke on the Protoss base, and here come the Protoss, desperate for some blood here, closing in, using the Colossus, trying to get some additional damage, and it looks like the Thors and the Marauders are going to simply be too much for this force. They're going to just power right through this Protoss force and just tear it to pieces. It's just far too many units for the Protoss force to deal with, and there's always the fact that those Marauders are very strong against any armored units, which both of those happen yeah. to be. And, and another, another nuke. nuke! Unbelievable! As the Protoss desperately try to rebuild this base, you can see the warping going on there, trying to power down this ghost. Can they get this ghost before the nuke falls? No! The nuke lands. The ghost hops back into the medevac and makes good his escape as that one ghost continues his relentless one-man army attack on the Protoss. David Kim and his addiction to terrible damage has really paid off this game. And you can see the Protoss are in a lot of trouble right now. They've got a lot of workers idle. There's not a lot they can do. The Terrans are in control of the board right now. They're trashing any attempt by the Protoss to get another next oh. to the field. And another he's got a nuke, nuke coming down right in position. exactly the right place. He wants to get the battle to fight here. The Protoss player may not have noticed the little oh. tiny red dot. No, he has seen it. It looks like he's going to back away. A nuke wasted, but still it's bought. The pro Terran player, a little bit of time to try to get in position. He uses Stim on his Marauders, and he's closing in for the kill. This is not the right unit mix for the Protoss right now. The Colossus can do okay against those Marauders, but still, the Marauders do a lot of damage against the Stalkers, and the Thor is very effective as well. If there's just been a few Zealots in there to distract those Marauders and Thor for just a few seconds longer, the tide of battle really could have changed. But right now, yun -Ho is having a lot of trouble keeping up anywhere on the map. He has been hit repeatedly, again and again, and right now he's even been forced to remote mine right. from his natural expansion. And he's really just trying to hold out at this point for as long as he can to see what he can do to keep back in this game. There are some tech choices that might get him back in the game. He might be able to get some Dark Templars out um, to really get him back in the game, but he's in a little bit of trouble right now. And there's the GG. He decided he's not going to get to that tech advantage. He knows David Kim has outplayed him, and it looks like another win, unbelievably, for David Kim. A fantastic match between these two players. I love nukes. Yeah, absolutely. What a great game. Thank you for joining us for this StarCraft II Battle Report.